Welcome to the On Location segment for the Skywatcher Star Adventure. My goal with this part of the course is to show you how to actually use the Star Adventure when you're out in the field. Whether you're going to be doing just wide-angle nightscapes or maybe even some deep space astrophotography, I'm going to show you the right way to set everything up so you get the best possible results. We're also going to cover how to do an accurate polar alignment because that's one of the most complicated things about a star tracker. But once you understand the basics of a polar alignment, this should only take you two or three minutes when you get out in the field. So I want to really break that down in a lot of detail. And then we'll look at which camera settings to use, how to connect your uh, camera to the adventure here if you want, and even some of the advanced time lapse features built into the adventure. So we got a lot to cover, but in this intro video, I just wanted to cover the basics of the adventure itself, as well as the latitude base here, so you're more familiar with how everything works. First, let's cover the just the star tracker itself. And on the side here, we've got our different tracking speeds. So if you leave it on off, of course, it won't use any battery. Then we could turn it to either the speed of the stars, which is usually 1x uh, solar, and also lunar speed. So if you want to track the moon or the sun, you can totally do that. Now, the cool thing is the adventure also includes tracking speeds for doing different types of time lapses. So if you put it to 12x, for example, now it's going to be moving at 12 times the speed of the stars, which will be pretty cool if you want to do a panning motion left or right. And of course, we'll have to set up the uh, latitude base here properly to make the most of our time lapses, but we'll get into that in a future video. So that's our tracking speed dial. On the other side, we've got our hemisphere switch as well as our slewing buttons and some inputs. So the hemisphere switch, you always want to leave this in whatever hemisphere you're in, either northern or southern hemisphere. And you can optionally turn it to the time lapse function as well, but you'll need to uh, watch the time lapse video to see how that all works. And then up top here, we have a left and right arrow buttons. These control the slewing. In other words, if we hold down those buttons, it's going to move the camera around, uh, the mountain around, either clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on which button you have held down. And the main reason you would do that is if you have a telephoto lens and you have a, let's say, a nebula in your frame, but it's not quite where you want it. You can use these buttons, but be aware that it moves very slowly. So you might hold this down and not really see anything going on. But if you were to telephoto focal length, you definitely see what's going on. So that's what those buttons are for. And then finally, we have three inputs. We've got a snap cable input, which is where you can attach your camera directly to the adventure here to trigger your camera shutter. But to be honest, I don't really recommend going down that route. You're better off getting a wireless or wired remote just because you're kind of really limited here with the adventure in terms of the snap cable functionality. There's also an auto guiding port where you can attach a auto guider and connect it to your laptop. But for most people, that's going to be really overkill and it's really only necessary if you're using a deep uh, space astrophotography. So most people should not have to worry about the auto guiding port. And then finally we have our USB. This is a mini USB, I believe. So you can attach your USB cable to here and actually power the adventure if you run out of batteries. Of course, you'll need a external power source for that to work. So that's everything here on the sides of the adventure. On the front is our camera mount. So this is where we'll attach either a ball head mounting adapter or the declination bracket into this slot. And beneath here, there's a little rubber plug. This is where our polar scope is going to go inside, or rather, our polar scope is built into the Star Adventure. So it's kind of nice you don't have to worry about installing it every time. Uh, but we'll look at that later on as well. And then this black piece here on the front, this is our clutch. So if we turn it counterclockwise, we can rotate the entire white piece around. And the reason we would do that is to either adjust our camera and lens, or also adjust the polar scope inside of the Star Tracker. Because what I want you to do right now is if you pull out the front plug, and take off the back plastic cap, look through your polar scope, and you'll see the reticle inside of there, and it's probably not lined up properly. So if you loosen the clutch on the front, you can now rotate the white piece around on the front and rotate it and so until uh, zero is at the top and six is at the bottom. That way you have a properly aligned reticle. We'll cover more of that later on because that's more for your polar alignment. Uh, but that's how that works. And really, that's about all there is to the adventure. So let's talk about the latitude base next. The latitude base is going to allow us to do a very accurate polar alignment, and it's also going to open up a whole new world of possibilities if you want to do time lapses with the adventure. So this is a critical piece of this entire system. Now, the main reason you need this base here is for our altitude and azimuth adjustments. So you might also see this referred to as an alt-az base. What that means is that the knob here on this side, this is our altitude. So if I turn this, you'll see the uh, star tracker starts to level out, or I angle it up higher. So that's our altitude adjustment, and there's some numbers on the front of this base here. This corresponds always to our current latitude. So in this example, I'm about 33 degrees north. Therefore, I want this to be as close as possible to 33. That way my star tracker is angled up at the same angle as the North Pole. And that's going to help for our polar alignment. 
So that's our altitude. Our azimuth are the two screws here on the front. And if we turn these both at the same time in the same direction, that moves the entire base very slightly left or right. And that's how we'll do more of our precise polar alignment as well. So between those two functions, the azimuth screws on the front and the altitude screw on the back, that comprises most of the functions here on our latitude base. The last things I want to cover in this intro video are your different mounting options. So we've got this simple ball head mounting adapter, which you might not have gotten depending on which setup you got uh, on B&H or wherever you bought this, but uh, you might want to get this if you don't have one already. It costs $15. This is the ball head mounting adapter, and this will just allow you to very quickly and easily attach a ball head and ultimately your camera to the camera mount here. Uh, but you don't necessarily need it because if you have the declination bracket, you can always attach your ball head to the top here or even to the ball head screw here. So there's no real need to get the ball head mounting adapter if you don't have one already, but it's definitely a nice little accessory to have if you just want a simple setup. Now we also have the uh, declination bracket here, also known as the fine tuning mount, I think they call it officially. So this will slide in just the same way as the ball head mounting adapter. And this is where we can attach a big telephoto lens or our camera and ball head as well. Uh, this will give us much better results with a big camera and lens just because we can mount everything directly. And we'll show you that full process later on. Last but not least, we have the counterweight kit. And this is going to install on the bottom of the declination bracket and help us balance a heavier se uh, camera setup or lens. And that's about all I have for you in this video. So we covered the basics of the adventure itself, all the different buttons and uh, inputs and the base. So in the following videos, we're really going to delve down into much more detail about doing your polar alignment, how to set this whole thing up if you're going to do wide-angle nightscapes, or maybe some deep space astrophotography, and a lot more.